My friends, we are overdue on a very important conversation and this is for anyone who feels like the cards are stacked against them. Like it's just, it's impossible. You weren't born to the right family. You don't have the right background. You're not in the right place. It's just too damn hard. This video is dedicated to you. So first of all, this mindset that you are this victim and the, the cards are stacked against you, that you're really just screwed, it really bothers me to my core. And anytime something really bothers you more so than the average person, you gotta examine why, because it points to something. And anytime I examine why it bothers me so much, I come to the same conclusion, which is because I had that option, I had that choice. And I saw what my life would look like if I continue down that road. And it's very scary and it's very off-putting. And I really, I really don't want to ever have lived that life. And I'm glad that I chose the opposite path. But the way that social media has been moving in the last several years is to reinforce and throw a pity party and make those those who can be the biggest victims feel, oh my God, yeah, like- Give me sympathy, yeah, like I'm the biggest victim. And it's this massive circle jerk that doesn't help anyone. Because here's the thing, reality is a lot more in your perception than in actual objective truths. Because here's the thing, we go back to when my life was crumbling around me. So I was 18 years old, I had just turned 18. Um, this was February of 2009. I started college at 17 in September of 2008. So I had just turned 18. I had this huge flare of Crohn's colitis, was hospitalized for four days, lost 30 pounds on an already pretty a frame that didn't have that much weight to lose. And it was rough. And then a couple months later, I'm not gonna get into the details here because this is a lot of just to respect people's privacy, but uh, you know, parents split up and me, my mom and my brother are now living in a one bedroom apartment. Being in a one bedroom apartment when you're 18 to 21 or 22, you know, that's already challenging enough. But then when you have to share a bathroom with other people, when you're just trying to get a handle on your chronic digestive illness, it like seared me to my core such that I made it a point that I'm going to get to a place where I never have to share a bathroom with someone so that if I need to use the bathroom, I can because the pain and the discomfort and just the, oh my God, was that salient. Now here's the thing, my life in that moment, I could have argued and you would not be able to refute this, this argument, which is that I had some pretty shit fucking luck. <laughs> like, let's be real. I have a new chronic digestive illness at the ripe age of 18. Uh, my family life imploded and there was a lot of stress there. Financially, totally screwed over. Um, living in a one bedroom apartment, really need, I mean, even prior to that, you know, I had saved six months to buy my first laptop. Like, I'm not really coming from a privileged background by the traditional sense. I do feel privileged in a lot of ways in that I was born in America and I have a loving mother. I think that actually is a pretty big advantage. But a lot of people in America have that and way more, and yet they somehow feel that they are such a massive victim, right? And I could have argued that, you know what? This is really tough and I could have spiraled down to depression and like not fought back and be like, you know what? dude, this is like a shitty hand that I've been dealt and what am I gonna do? You couldn't argue with that. I mean, things kind of sucked. Oh yeah, also I'm a minority. <laughs> so like being a minority, especially if you're going into medicine, South Asians and East Asians are overrepresented minorities in medicine. And if you wanna get into medical school and you're from that ethnic background, too bad, you need to have a higher average GPA and higher average MCAT than even Caucasian students. If you are white, you have to be this good of a student. If you're Asian, you gotta be here. So I was part of this group. The cards are stacked against me. I should've just given up and not even applied to med school. And I see a lot of comments from people saying, hey, you know, I'm Asian and... Dude, you can argue that. And objectively, no one can argue back. You can say that that's, that's true. But you have to choose the reality that serves you. So what I said in that moment, it's like, you know what? This sucks. Life is tough. But bring it. I said, I mean, part of my language, but I, <laughs> my, my motto was like, fuck you, bring it. That was my motto. And it, like anytime, you know, I got hit with IBD and I was like, okay, fuck you, bring it. Parents divorce, fuck you, bring it. And then finally, move into a one bedroom apartment. Fuck you, bring it. And the, the mentality I had was like, look, I don't care what life throws my way. I am going to push back. I'm going to fight the odds. And you could argue objectively that, hey, Kevin, you come from a not financially privileged background. You're this kind of minority. Uh, you got diagnosed with a digestive illness. How are you gonna get into med school, right? And for those who don't know, my story was I worked really goddamn hard for throughout college. I didn't take a gap year. Um, I just went straight through. So I applied during the end of my junior year of college. And I got into a lot of top medical schools, including top five medical schools. And I went to UC San Diego. I got the, they offer one scholarship per year to a student like this, the highest merit-based scholarship, which I received and I got all my tuition covered and most of my living expenses, despite having a lot of things stacked up against me. Now, 
the reason I, I bring this up is not to boast, right? It's to show you guys, because like, I, I get it. It's very disheartening when you see a lot of these influencers, like <laughs> a lot of YouTubers even, who straight up like live in these mansions and they come from really privileged backgrounds or their parents are doctors and, and you guys probably know a lot of them actually. And it may seem that, oh, if I don't come from a certain background, if I don't have like, like you know, financial backing, if I'm not X, Y, and Z, then I'm screwed, I'm, I'm SOL. But that's not true. Like, it's all about your reality. So when I chose to view my life through this lens of, hey, you know what? The odds are stacked against me, but fuck it, bring it. When I approach things through that lens, that was my reality. And you could argue that, hey, objectively, like, you know, the stats are, are stacked against you. Sure, but there's a probability I can still kick ass, right? So the reality you choose, choose the one that serves you. And too many people these days are choosing a reality that doesn't serve them. They're just becoming victims. They're holding themselves back. You can argue either reality, no one can prove you wrong, but choose the reality that is going to actually make you happier, more successful, bring you closer to your goals in the long run, okay? The other thing related to that is, uh, there's like this whole black pill, blue pill, red pill, all these pills, I don't know, can't even keep track of all the different colored pills. I'm colorblind, goddammit, I, I don't know the different pills. And a lot of guys, a lot of young dudes, I mean, I understand where the frustration is. They're like, ah, I wanna pursue money and I wanna pursue women. Here's the thing, if you're the guy that pursues women or pursues money as your main goals. I know some guys like this, okay? That, I mean, they're actually a bit older than me. They're in their mid to late thirties and they just pursue money and or women. They're not people you wanna be, all right? When you are so one dimensional, you don't have much else going on in your life. And paradoxically, they don't have much money and they're not as successful with women versus if they did not pursue that as their primary goal. And now your success with women is however you define it. And I think for a lot of guys, it's, it's having the optionality of choosing the best woman for them in a, in a long-term relationship, right? Um, but if you have a different goal, same thing applies, whether you just want casual relationships or wh whatever it is, it doesn't like no judgment, whatever you wanna do. But when you pursue these things as your primary goals, paradoxically, they evade you, okay? It's just like when you try to pursue happiness as your primary objective, by pursuing happiness, you are forever reinforcing the fact that to pursue happiness, you must not be happy. You're now reinforcing, you are now pursuing this thing that is evading you because you're never gonna be happy when you're pursuing happiness. Happiness just occurs to you. Now, similarly, when it comes to money and, and girls, which is like the two common things that seem to be big pain points for, for young guys, they're gonna evade you. They really will. So if instead you pursue excellence, and that, like, that's my motto, man. That's like, you pursue excellence, things fall into place. So if you pursue excellence with your career, with your success, with your health, you, you get into the best shape of your life, you, you get into the med schools, you have a successful business, whatever it is, you're gonna find the money and the success with women. Again, I'm using that in quotes because it depends on how you define that. It's just gonna follow as a result. It's a second order effect. It's not the primary goal, but it happens secondarily and paradoxically because you're not pursuing it as your main goal, you can actually achieve a higher level of success than if you were pursuing those as your main goals. It's like confidence too. A lot of people wanna know, how can I be more confident? You don't fake it till you make it, because that's how you get imposter syndrome. That's how you have arrogance. That's how you have fake confidence that doesn't actually, it's not robust. And people can tell. But when you do hard things and you get through it, and sometimes you fail, but sometimes you succeed, when you do hard things and you keep doing that again and again and again, year after year, you build true confidence. And when you pursue excellence, life is just better. And in fact, if more people pursued excellence, I think they'd be happier. They wouldn't feel the need to be such victims in their own lives. And I mean, it's actually really easy to stand out these days. I get a lot of internship requests um, with med school insiders or men. Young people, usually like college age or early med school, that want to help out with the business. It's shocking to me, the number of people who, we always start with the trial task, right? And during that trial task, just kind of see, hey, is it a good fit? The number of people that just magically have a family emergency <laughs> is, it's like 95% of people have a family emergency. Obviously not 95% of people are having emergencies, they're making excuses, right? Because they set a deadline, they said they were going to do something by a certain date, and then for whatever reason, they don't have the discipline, they don't have the, they don't hold themselves to a high enough standard to follow through with it. It doesn't work out. And the 5% that do, wow, instantly impressive. Like that is, isn't that kind of crazy that just doing what you say you're gonna do by a deadline already makes you the top 5% of people? Think about that. If you pursue excellence, it is, it's so easy to stand out in this day and age, because especially in America, the level of effort that people are willing to put in is not that high. It's really easy to stand out. So again, if you come from this background where you're not privileged or whatever, let me tell you my story briefly when I started Med School Insiders. 
So again, you got those influencers out there who are in these really nice fancy homes, they got amazing cameras, whatever, their parents are doctors, and there's no, nothing wrong with that. But I have a certain level of respect for those who can do things without that advantage. I think it's, it really speaks to resilience, it speaks to grit, it speaks to resourcefulness. The Med School Insiders channel started with me taking my three-year-old iPhone, and again, am I privileged to have a three-year-old iPhone at the time? Sure. But again, it's all relative, right? I took my three-year-old iPhone, threw it on a selfie stick, and I bought a $16 Amazon tripod and I attached that selfie stick to the Amazon tripod. Then I drew on a piece of paper with a pen. That first ever video now has like, I don't know, 700,000 views. Med School Insiders grew to have 100,000 subscribers in five months from that first video. Five months. No Instagram, no newsletter, no website, no nothing. Just YouTube videos, one video per week. And then 11 months from when we started, from that October 2016 video, we hit 200K one video and I started with an Amazon $16 tripod, my iPhone, no mic, no professional editing software. It was, it was just like as gritty as you can get, as bootstrapped as you can get. No borrowing money from, from parents. I know a guy who started a business, took out a small $30,000 loan that he paid his parents back like a couple years later when he started his business. He's a successful business now and it's impressive, but like a lot of us can't relate to that. How many of us can take a $30,000 loan from our parents? My father gave me a small loan of a million dollars. A small loan of a million dollars. My father gave dollars. me a small loan. Not only is it the money and, and the opportunity right there, but then you have this cushion to be like, hey, if I fail, my parents are well off. Like I'm not gonna be on the streets. It's all about your perception. It's all about the reality you create around yourself. And does that reality serve you? Sometimes people ask me like, hey, Kevin, uh, you've achieved some level, like dude, I'm not the most successful anything, <laughs> not the most successful YouTuber, not the most successful businessman, whatever. But I'm at a point where a lot of people will ask me like, hey, I want to become a YouTuber, or hey, I want to start a business, or hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And how did you get to your level? I think the number one thing it comes down to is the mindset of pursuing excellence. And when you think back, like Med School Insiders, the one thing that I'm very proud of with MSI is that it is the fastest growing company of its type. We have scared the very established 10 plus year old companies in the first two years. We got a thousand customers in our second year. And one of the largest companies in the space it took them nine years because I spoke with the founder about it. And we've grown so fast, but okay, why is that? Is it, did I just get lucky? Maybe, and a lot of people will, will attribute success just to luck. But I think it is a culmination of pursuing excellence for years, for over a decade, right? From the time that I was 17 years old when I first started college, or rather 18 years old, when I had that, when I, when I felt like my world was crumbling around me, I said, okay, bring it. I'm gonna try so goddamn hard. And by pursuing that, by grinding for 10 years, then I started Med School Insiders. And part of the reason is that, I mean, that first ever video, that first ever video, like you look at the content, the actual quality of the, of the insights there, that thing slaps, man. That thing slaps so hard. It's already at what, 700,000 views despite it being such a garbage production quality. I remade the video as study smart, study less two years later. And I got a couple comments from people thinking that I copied Ali Abdal. Bro, I remade my first ever video with animations. So who could I have copied? But the reason MSI took off wasn't because we had this really slick production quality because I had really nice cameras and I lived in a beautiful house. No, it's because I, I worked so hard for so many years trying to improve myself as a student. I was pursuing excellence. And then I distilled all that into a single video. I was just providing value for free on YouTube. And people found that. People said, hey, this is good stuff. And the channel grew so rapidly. Same thing on the website. When we started Med School Insiders, the admissions and con admissions consulting and tutoring services, we said, how can we be the best? How can we do things better than anyone else in the industry? And I actually, I had a lot of friends at the time that we actually poached from a lot of these competitors. And I asked them, I was like, hey, what, what do you like? What do you not like about your current system? And we found issues where there wasn't consistency or there wasn't the highest quality service for every customer. I said, cool, let's create a system that is going to solve that problem. And it took a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of added complexity, but it was worth it because now we offer better services and we've become the fastest growing company with the best reviews. Like we, we had, thousand customers in the second year. Like that's, that's nuts. That's wild. That level of growth, you don't, you don't see that. And the reason is because we pursued excellence for so long. And then even with Med School Insiders, again, we're pursuing excellence. How can we do things better than anyone else in the industry? Mem as well. Mem has grown so rapidly because we are focused on, on pursuing excellence, creating the best flashcard app out there, flashcard system plus review sheets, this integration for the MCAT anywhere. So it comes down to three things. Number one, choose your reality. Don't be a victim because you're only holding yourself back. Choose the reality that serves you and your long-term goals. If you choose to be a victim, look, no one can prove you wrong. You can prove yourself to be the biggest victim the world has ever seen. But where does that leave you? Number two is don't pursue the flashy, glitzy things. Don't pursue, a lot of young guys pursue money and women in their early 20s. No, don't do that. Pursue excellence instead. And everything else, the money, the professional success, 
whatever you define as success with women, maybe it's having a really stellar, amazing girlfriend that you think is like the best of the best, you're like, oh my God, how did I get so lucky? All that stuff will fall into place when you pursue excellence. That's it, my friends. Much love. See you next time.